Okay. Good Friday afternoon and uh, morning. <laughs> I will see you again in the afternoon. So last week we uh in in our uh lecture we we came into something really really interesting. We're trying to solve this problem. Okay. So in in part we 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 did okay and and as I said, I en really enjoy teaching this class because you are asking me questions they have not thought about. Okay. So let, let me finish off or let me highlight what is our issue. Okay. So last week I thought we we I told you about this line, which is equal to our shear force axis. Okay, and there so we're going to design our shear flow. Okay, so we are aware that we have a shear force coming down this way, and then we have our uh, we have our respective shear flow. Okay, so over here, right, we have a junction point, and then one Q go here. Right, we drew this. And then the other one go the other way. And then we also design or guess or by observation. We see where our centroid is. Anywhere centroid is. So the centroid, let me finish uh, drawing my shear flow. So you got Q going one side, Q going the other side. And then the centroid is about here. Okay, so this is our centroid. Okay, so this is our centroid. So uh, one student, I can't remember the student's name already. I think Mariam, okay, asked a question. What if, okay, what if we have a point, okay, and we specify a arbitrary number, okay, and this point is about 14 millimeters. As, as, as you can see, right, is uh, 14 millimeters from the bottom, and I'm going to call this point F. So what is the shear flow or, or what is the uh, shear stress, okay, at point F, okay? So it's an it's a interesting problem, right, it's an interesting problem. Because immediately what comes to my mind or any of my mind nouns are the four rules. Okay, four rules used in shear stress uh, analysis. Right. Right. So the, the, the four rules, I, I think you guys are really familiar with it. Number one, right? So if you look at this formula, it is VQ over IT, right? So rule uh, number one, right? V and I are constant. Okay. Why, why, am, why am I stating these rules? Because when the question was asked, okay, First thing that comes to my mind are the four rules. Okay, what are they? Okay, so that, that's why I'm 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 talking about the four rules now. Then rule number two is the 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 uh, datum is at the centroid. Rule number three. Analysis 
Ducks at Waymax. Yeah, and rule number four. Let's see. Rule number four, uh, the first moment area. Cannot cross the centroid. Okay. So we, we came up with these rules. So when I look at the rules, what comes to my mind is, mm, what is the first moment of area that we're going to take? Okay, right. What is the first moment of area we're going to take? So I thought, okay, I thought that the first moment of area that we're going to consider is this entire area. Okay, I thought, okay, I thought. Okay, so there was a lot of uh, interaction in the class, okay, which is absolutely amazing. I'm not taught a class where everyone is keen to uh, want to contribute to an answer. Okay, and I did not know the answer until I test things out. Okay, as I said, I thought this is the right answer. Okay, so immediately after class, I sat down and okay, before the class start last Friday, I already have an issue already. What issue I had is if we consider uh, point D, right? Point D is smack on at the centroid, okay? So remember when we were when we were uh, deriving a set of mathematical rules, right? And we, we we faced one of this problem when I started, right? So we 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 look at this problem where it's a hat, okay, the a, a hat structure. And I, I I did mention, right? Whether we did I say over here point C. So basically, yeah, if we look at point C, right, if we were to find point C, right, based on thin one analysis, okay, so the first part means we are taking the top, okay, above the centroid. And the second part which we derive is we consider just the below the centroid, okay. So this is what French analysis. So both of them, came out to be the same answer, okay? Both of them, either you do from the top or you do from the bottom, the answer has to be the same, okay? So I, 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 I thought on that day, okay, before the class start, when I was deriving it, it did not match up, okay? Something is going on wrong, which I have not observed, okay? I'm, I'm, I'm not observed, okay? okay so, what is this something that is uh, different? So now let's let's try uh, what I propose. Okay, so we're gonna find uh, point D from the top. Okay, we're gonna find point D from the top. So uh, let me copy this first. Okay, so we're gonna find point D from the top. Right. And through observation, you guys will already know uh, it's not going to work. Okay, but I want to show it uh, with numbers. Okay, so we are going to find uh, point D. Okay, point D based on analysis above the centroid. Right, so the area that we are going to consider is this area over here. Okay, this area over there. So based on this area, right? So what what we what we see is the uh, Q or summation of Q is equal to the Q of the flange plus by the Q of the web. In this case, we know the analysis is based on what? Uh, box beam. So 
So we have two Q because one Q split one side, the other Q split from the other side relative to the what? To the shear force axis. Yeah, so shear force axis. So we did the calculation last week, right? I'm going to do it again. So the Q of the flange, the width, I'm going to take it, the thickness is two millimeters, okay? So I'm going to take it as uh, uh, twice of width multiplied by depth multiplied by 25, okay? And then plus by twice because uh, you got two Q going left and right. The vertical side is uh, 26 multiplied by the width there's two right and no i should have done width first sorry two 26 so you have uh 26 divided by two oh wrong bracket right so the value that we got is uh two times 10 times 2 times 25 plus by 2 times 2 times 26 times 30 is equal to uh, 2352 millimeters cube or uh, 2352 times 10 to the power minus 9 meters cube. Okay. Then from here, we can directly apply and find uh, stress at point D, right? So stress at point D equal to, so V is equal to, uh, if I'm not wrong, is 5 kilo Newton. Q is 2352 times 10 to the power minus 9. Divide by V is equal to, uh, we got a V the last time is 133.76, sorry, the I times 10 to the power minus 9. Thickness. 2 times 10 to the power minus 3. Box beam, you divide by 2. Okay, so 5 power 3 times by 2, 3, 5, 2 power minus 9. Divide 1, 3, 3.76 power minus 9. Divide by 2 power minus 3, divide by 2. Is I get 21.979. Times 10 to the power 6 Pascal. Okay. All right. So this is based on analysis above the centroid. The next thing I'm going to do, right? I'm going to consider the analysis from the bottom, right? So if you look at the bottom, based on these four rules over here, right? I had my mindset that this is the area that we have to consider. That's why I taught last week. Okay, I thought, hey. So that is the area that we have to consider. Okay. So I took that area. Okay. So now we want to find point D. Right. So once I'm going to find point D based on analysis, right, below the centroid. Okay. So I thought, okay, I'm going to use the entire area. Okay. So summation of Q will be uh, twice the Q of the web plus by Q of the flange. Right. So Q of the web twice multiplied by width is uh, bleh, mm, uh, two. Depth is uh, 26. Okay. Y bar is 26 divided by 2. Plus by the Q of flange. So the, the, the width should be 8. The depth is 2. And this is 25. Okay. So when I calculate this, 2 times 2 power minus 3 times Y. Hey, Eugene, what are you doing? Don't times 10 to power minus 3 yet. Just times 2. Okay, so 2 times 2 times 26 times by 26 divided by 2 plus by 8 